In lecture 8, we will study the lateral dynamic stabilities. And in this first mini lecture, we will look at the road damping mode and the, the spiral mode. And in the lateral dynamic stability, we are going to discuss about three modes, three uh, stability modes. And the first two are going to be looked at today. And the Dutch row mode will be studied the, in the next mini lecture. Okay. So we are going to look at firstly the dam row damping or called row subsidence. So about row damping and the subsidence. First, let me introduce the concepts about this mode, dynamic mode, and assume an aircraft. Now we have a uh, rear view of this aircraft, passenger aircraft. It's subject to sudden wing drop, so we can see the right wing drops down. And uh, we restrict the motion is about x axis only. And in this case, there is a positive roll rate P, is that right? Okay. And because of the right wing going downwards and the left wing going upward, there is a unbalanced force acting on the induced lift on the right wing and reduced lift on the left wing so that a restoring rolling moment will be produced and that's uh, note, uh, denoted as LP times P. So that's because, why LP times P? Because it's, uh, uh, the rolling moment is uh, due to the change in rolling rate. Okay, so now uh, we've done the analysis of this problem. How can we write down the governing equation and so that we can study uh, mathematically Okay, so according to the Newton second law, so every governing equation we need to start from the Newton second law. That's the conclusion we have from also the experience we have from the um, longitudinal modes. Okay, so we have the rolling moment and it equals LP times P. And uh, it's produced by the acceleration related with acceleration of the rolling rate. So we have Ix times P dot, that's uh, acceleration um, in row. Okay, and assume again, we have the solution P equals Ae to the power lambda T, right? And then the acceleration of P can be written as uh, lambda P. So we are quite familiar with this derivation now, and we just plug in P dot, and so we have the governing equation becomes LP times P equals Rx times lambda P. And apparently the P can be eliminated. And then we can have lambda. Lambda equals LP divided by Ix. Now it's quite straightforward. And so assume we have, we, we assume the rolling rate P equals A times E to the power of lambda T. Now we know lambda, assume uh, we know A, then P is, is known. Okay, so in order for most aircraft, LP divided by Rx, Ix is negative, it's less than zero, it's negative value, and its magnitude, absolute value, is larger than one. So what does this suggest? Can you recall? If it's negative, the power of E is negative means the curve, if we plot the curve, is convergent, so means the mode is stable. And if it's larger than 1, means it's uh, beyond critical damping. So what does that mean? So it means this is uh, non-oscillatory mode, and it's heavily damped. Okay. Now let's take a few examples. So first we look at the Cessna 172 aircraft. So we know it's LPC is a negative value and Ix it's a moment of inertia along x-axis. Okay, so we can have lambda is minus 11.03, so it's negative value and its magnitude is far larger than 1. So um, the row damping mode is uh, heavily damped and non-oscillatory for the uh, Cessna 172 is stable and the 
period time, uh, not period time, the half time, the time to half amplitude because it's convergent and it's stable. We have the time to half amplitude, and so it's very small value, 0 0.06 to 8 seconds. So you can you're encouraged to do the uh, practice. So it's, you see, it's uh, heavily damped. It's really quick to be damped. Now, in contrast, let's see a much, much larger aircraft, which is Airbus A340, which is very for engine aircraft, passenger aircraft, and it's uh, dual passage. So it has LP again, negative value, and there's moment of inertia, much larger value, 10 to the power, uh, 10 to the power of 7 and then lamina is minus 1.311 and the time to half amplitude is uh, 0.53 seconds so although it's much larger it's, uh, it's about 10 times of the Cessna 172 but it's still quite quite small less than one second so this mode road damping mode or road subsidence mode is heavily damped and there's no oscillatory okay so the next mode, we finished the, the road damping. Let's look at the spiral mode. Now we have a top view of the aircraft. And assume the aircraft is subject to slow side slip and a slow in yaw, slow yaw. And for example, now the aircraft is yawing at a rate of R. Okay. And First, let's look at the roll motion. And for roll motion, side slip will contribute, and the yaw will also contribute. So side slip has L beta times beta. Beta is a side slip angle, and yaw is contributed through LR times R. That's a yawing rate, R. Okay. And again, the Newton's second law, the Rolling moment L equals I X times P dot. That's acceleration of P rolling rate, and then equals L beta times beta plus L R times R. And we assume it's zero because this aircraft um, as in this assumption, only subject to slow side slip and slow in yaw. There's no row, so the row contribution is zero. Okay. Then we can write down beta, the uh, side slip angle. Okay. So now we have the expression of beta. Okay. So finishing the row discussion, we are going to the yaw motion. And for the yaw motion, similarly, uh, we need to look at the yaw moment n, and it's Again, Newton's second law, Iz times R dot, that's the acceleration of yaw rate. And also we have N beta times beta plus N R times R. So basically similar uh, question just by replacing L by N. Okay. Then we have L Z times R dot. That's a uh, yaw in, in the yawing motion equation. So we just plug in the beta, so we have this relation. And again, you're encouraged to practice. It helps you to remember. And again, assume the solution has this form. We are quite familiar. Again, r equals a e to the power of lambda t. And we have the acceleration of r and equals lambda r. So we just plug in the r dot, so we can have i z times lambda r equals the right hand side. So that's a governing equation uh, from the yaw motion. And if we write down the lamina explicitly, so we have this, it's, it's slightly more complicated and we need to do a bit more discussion. So as long as we all know all these uh, components on the right hand side of lamina and we can know R, the solution for R, is that right? And okay, so usually I Z let's let's first start from the denominator. I Z is positive, L beta is negative. So the denominator is negative value. But on the numerator, N R and L beta usually are negative, so the multiplication is positive. 
on the, uh, the second turn, which is M beta times LR, both are positive, so it's positive in the second turn. And so we have positive minus positive. So it's a bit, there's several uh, outcomes. Okay, so in order to, to make sure this mode, spiral mode, is uh, stable, lamina need to be negative, which means M beta LR should be larger than NR times L beta. So that's a requirement we need. Okay. So I'm copying the result from the previous slide in here. And in order to um, achieve a stable spiral mode, um, we should have NR divided by M beta larger than LR divided by L beta. Both are uh, looking at the uh, absolute value, okay? And now let's see a few examples. First, let's see the Cessna 172. We are familiar with this light aircraft. So the first turn has a value of 1.37 and the second has a value of 0.97. So the first is larger than the second. It is stable and it's the same for Learjet and Airbus 3. Four zero. So both uh, all the three are stable. But if you're looking at the Boeing seven four seven, the first thing has a value of point five five. The second is point nine six. And you may wonder why. So this result is apparently make the aircraft unstable. So it's slightly unstable. And you may be curious: is that safe for the Boeing seven four seven? Actually, slight instability here for the spiral mode has no problem. Even because even a human pilot can sense the onset because it is very slow mode. An autopilot has no problem in correcting in correcting this. Okay, and so even if it's slight, remember even if it's slightly unstable, still there's no problem because at the time it takes to um, to develop is is very big. And let's see an example from here. So this is uh, actual example, some data from the analysis of the spiral mode. And the first plot is the um, equivalent airspeed. And we know true airspeed, what is equivalent airspeed? It takes into account the uh, compressibility effect and we did some correction on the density. And the second is the altitude. If we compare in the spiral mode, the altitude decreases and the speed, equivalent air speed increases. Is that right? Because it's kind of going downward. And if we look at the row, row angle change, and in this case, um, because it's slightly unstable, because the row rate, row angle, increases all the way and so if it's unstable we are looking at the time to double double amplitude and if we do some measurements in the graph it's about 32 seconds so you see 32 seconds is quite long and the pilot can easily sense and do the correction so even if it's slightly unstable for the spiral mode and it's uh, there's no problem and the regulation requires a minimum time to double amplitude is 20 seconds. So for the jet stream, this aircraft, it's 32 seconds. So it's larger than the um, minimum TD of 20 seconds. So and um, this aircraft can be can be certified. Okay, so in this class, we've derived, we've discussed the uh, road damping and a spiral mode, and then we know both modes are non-oscillatory, first of all, and they are usually stable, but especially for the spiral mode, uh, it can be slightly unstable. As long as the um, time to double amplitude is uh, um, big enough, larger than the regulation.